time for the last word on sports. Sports, 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 sports. They call me the walking encyclopedia of sports radio, and you know what? I'm proud of it. I have no idea. With your host, Brandon Leopold. Center on the phone. We have the University of Michigan head or er, color commentator and Detroit Lions color commentator Jim Branstadter joining us now on the last word on sports. Mr. Branstadter, out of respect, I have to ask this. May we call you Jim? You sure may. <laughs> all right then, Jim. First of all, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day to uh, to do this interview. We Glad have... to be with you. Mount Pleasant's one of my favorite places. <laughs> well, Ann Arbor is certainly one of mine. We. Kevin and I had sat down with uh, with Zoltan Mesko earlier today, and we asked him this question, and now we're going to ask you, how do the Chippewas look to you as we go forward into year two under Rich Rodriguez? The you, Wolverines, I think. As, as in, do you I see... I was going to say, you know what? The Chippewas are going to look good, depending upon how that quarterback does <laughs> up there. He's, he's getting a lot of preseason play. <laughs> I, I meant to say, how does the University of Michigan <laughs> look to you? Forgive me for that little flub. No, there, no, but, no, that's okay, because I was going to say, uh, you guys get yourself a quarterback up yeah, there. Yeah, we so. have Chippewa fever. That's right, a yes, chip. He's going to be pretty good one. I, I know he's getting a lot of national attention. He's going to have some pressure on him. But uh, from Michigan's perspective, uh, I think you can talk about the quarterback as being a big difference in what they're going to be like this fall. Uh, Tate Forcier is a young freshman, true freshman, uh, came in and had the benefit of working in the entire spring uh, and took a lot of snaps, got a lot of reps because Nick Sheridan uh, hurt himself. So Tate probably goes into the the fall as the leading candidate to play quarterback. But Denard Robinson comes in from Florida, another true freshman. He's got great athletic ability, great skill, and can run like the wind. So just that position and how improved that will be, I think will make Michigan much better offensively. And the fact that they're in the second year of the system of Rich Rodriguez now, they know where to line up. You know, They know what plays it. They're going to play instinctively rather than thinking first and, and, and then getting the spread going that way. And it's always better when that happens. So I expect a much improved offensive team uh, than a year ago. So overall for the, the whole team, defense included, do you think this is going to be you know a good season, maybe oh, yeah. a winning That's, season, or just well, like a five-win season? I, I, think, I think that they're a bowl team. I think that they're in a 7-8 win range. Now, that may be optimistic. A lot of people don't feel that way. I know there are a lot of national media out there that don't feel that way. But I kind of go back and look at what Richard Rodriguez has done in the past in his second year anywhere. And uh, he did. He came up from the 3-9 and nine season with, with uh, West Virginia. He won 8-9 games the, the next year. And, and I think he's he's got, I think, great skill offensively. He's got five, six running backs that I think that he can use. His uh, receiving core is ex- exceptional. And if he gets some play out of his quarterback, I think that they're, they're going to score points. Now, the introduction of Greg Robinson as the new defensive coordinator, I think, is going to help. And they've done a nice job, I think, of bringing in and changing some positions around and getting guys in, in, in the right positions to play the kind of scheme that they want to play. A uh, kid named Steve Brown is going to be very important to the Michigan defense this year because he's kind of a quasi-safety linebacker. Uh, and, again, it's a defense that, that they want to run that, that is a defense that is kind of geared to help stop the spread. And, and one of the things that the college football is going to, I mean, Central Michigan's gone to it, is more of a spread look. Everybody's got a kind of variation on that. And you've got to have athletes in your secondary and your back end uh, that can play in, in space and make plays on offensive players. And, and Michigan is getting those people in those positions, whereas last year I think they struggled with that. Well, we're still here. Uh, this is Kevin Drescher again. I just uh, My other question is, is for you know all the scrutiny that Rich Rod- Rodriguez has been getting, if it happens to be a bad season again like last year for him, do you think they start to put him on the hot seat and give him a you know a short a short reign here? No, I don't think so. Uh, Rich Rodriguez got a four year deal, and and I fully expect him to complete that four year deal. Uh, it it doesn't do any good, and I'm talking about all over college football. It doesn't do any good 
that if you give a guy, you know, comes in and he brings in a new system with him, he brings in mm-hmm. uh, a new staff, recruiting is, is brand new in a different area, and if you start putting him in the hot seat or uh, telling him his job is in jeopardy after a second year, uh, you're never going to have a winner. You're never going to have a, a guy, a coach, that's going to want to come and coach for your university because that's just not enough time in today's college football given the fact you're bringing in a whole new system and a whole new staff into a new program in a new state. You can't expect somebody in two years uh, to completely turn that thing around. You've got to give him a full complement, a four-year recruiting run, and, and then make a decision on whether you think he's going in the right direction. Okay. Also, uh, we were wondering, do you think that the Wolverines have a chance against any of their big three rivals, that being Notre Dame, Michigan State, and Ohio State, which last year they lost to all three of them, and that was only the second time in history. I think the other time was 1987, and that's a big thing to the Michigan faithful is, you know, at least trying to get some wins against some of those teams, especially Ohio State. Yeah, oh, I think they do. I absolutely think they do. Uh, I think Notre Dame is going to be a great test early. You know, for them, I mean, last year, Michigan turned the ball over about 15 times against Notre Dame in an awful rainstorm down in South Bend. Uh, but they weren't, you know, they were blown out in that game because, you know, Notre Dame got three drives of uh, 20 yards or less for touchdowns. And, and my belief is, is that if they don't turn the ball over and their offense uh, plays better and has a quarterback that's a playmaker, uh, they can play with any of those those teams. Uh, Ohio State will be interesting at the end of the year because I think they've got some questions they've got to answer. Everybody's ready to put them in, in the national championship because of Terrell Pryor, but they lost some great talent in, in, in Laurinaitis and Freeman at linebacker, defensive linemen, secondary guys that went early in the draft, and a guy named Beanie Wells. So it's not like you know Ohio State right now looks loaded. Uh, they're going to be real good, and clearly Pryor's a great player. But uh, they've got some things they've got to prove, and, and we'll see how good Ohio State is when they uh, host uh, SC in week three, I think, of the season. So I think, I think yeah, Michigan's got a good shot at, at Michigan State in East Lansing. Michigan State's got some, uh, you know, they lose Ringer, they lose their quarterback. Uh, so they've got some things they've got to prove. And uh, Notre Dame, again, I think it's going to be a good team, but it'll be a great test, and I think Michigan will be very competitive with all three of them, yes. Jim, Brandon Leopold back here with you. And by the way, uh, D- University of Michigan and Detroit Lions color commentator Jim Bradstatter joins us right now. Jim, you had the opportunity that not very many people had, the uh, the opportunity to suit up, put on the winged helmet, and play for Bo Schembechler. And for those for those that are that are casual college football fans that don't really know what the uni- what University of Michigan football is all about, what what is Michigan football all about? Well, it's uh, first of all, I was very lucky. I mean, I'm very fortunate. Uh, you're 17 years old, and you make a decision where you're going to go to school and, mm-hmm. and play football. And, and luckily, Michigan recruited me. And I was fortunate that Bo Schembechler came there in my freshman year, and he was my coach my sophomore, junior, and senior year. But when you play in Michigan, you, you become part of a, a tradition and a legacy of guys like Tom Harmon, uh, Jim Mandich, mm-hmm. uh, Bob Chappius, uh, the historical names of the game, uh, Fritz Chrysler, uh, Fielding Yost, these are giants. These are like the Amos Alonzo Stags, the Newt Rockneys. You mention their names in the same breath, and you're a part of that. You become a part of that tradition. And to me, uh, you know, when you talk about a Michigan man, you talk about a guy who, uh, you know, is straightforward, honest, 